Sometimes choosing the wrong support material can have devastating consequences. The Terran Space Academy is dedicated to educating you so you can avoid these mistakes and have a long and healthy career in the space industry. Hello and thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and contribute if you can. This course is the first in a series on space engineering. This lesson will be covering composite materials for aerospace applications. Composite materials were first developed by nature. Two of the best examples are bones and bird nests. Bones are composed of a mesh framework of a leather-like material called collagen. Collagen is the body's flexible support substrate. When we are in utero, our bones are completely flexible and cartilaginous. Sharks and other cartilaginous fish stay in this state and do not have solid bones like most other animals do. Humans, however, have a strong crystal matrix that forms within the mesh of collagen. This crystalline substance is called hydroxyapatite. The combination of a flexible mesh interwoven with a strong substrate material is very strong without becoming overly brittle. The crystals of the hydroxyapatite align their long axis with the fibers of the mesh. Now some bird nests are made of sticks glued together with mud or another binding substance. Humans all over the world found that if they mixed straw or grass in with their clay bricks, the bricks were much stronger. The aerospace industry started using composite materials as far back as the 1930s. Howard Hughes famously built his massive spruce goose flying boat using sheets of birch ply duramold with phenolic resin laminated together at 138 centigrade. The first use of carbon fiber composites was in the 1960s on the compressor blades of the RB211 jet engine by Rolls-Royce. Laminate means multiple thin layers are applied and remember that all composite materials use multiple layers hundreds in some applications. Let's look at the options for these materials in use today. Think of modern aerospace composites as being made of cloth and glue. The cloth or fiber is usually one of three different types. Glass fiber, ballistic fiber, or carbon fiber. Glass fiber most of us are familiar with. We can see this at our local auto parts store. It is used to repair metal automobiles as well as walls and other structures. The Chevrolet Corvette was originally made of glass fiber usually called fiberglass in the United States. This made the car lighter and stronger than a metal car. Glass fiber has a diameter of about 10 millimeters, a strength of more than 300 gigapascals, and a stiffness of up to 85 gigapascals. It is often used in boats, wind turbine blades, and some automobiles. It needs a salt water treatment to bond well to its matrix and is susceptible to breakdown from environmental exposure and chemicals and especially fatigue. Ballistic materials include fibers like Kevlar, usually called aramid in this application. Kevlar is well known for its use in bulletproof vests. It has a strength of more than 3 gigapascals with highly aligned linear polymer chains, but has a low stiffness due to compression as these linear chains come apart easily. It is susceptible to ultraviolet light and moisture. It does not bond well at all, leading to a weak but wear-resistant composite. The weak interface is useful for energy absorption and it is used in bulletproof vests, military helmets, and impact protection on aircraft. Carbon fiber has a diameter of about 8 millimeters, a strength greater than 5 gigapascals, and a stiffness of up to 700 gigapascals. It is not susceptible to most chemicals and it is very resistant to fatigue. Fibers bond well with surface treatment, and it is quick to see why this far exceeds the abilities of fiberglass, and one would wonder why anyone would choose fiberglass over carbon fiber. The reason is that carbon fiber is very, very expensive, making its cost justified only in very expensive race cars and high-performance aircraft. It is used extensively in fighter jets and passenger aircraft also. Once we have chosen our fabric, based on our budget and expected operating conditions, we need to have a frame or mold so we can apply the fabric and then apply an adhesive, also called a matrix. The matrix choice is as important as fabric choice. Again, there are three main choices. Phenolic was the first modern resin and was used on wooden composite airplanes during World War II. The de Havilland Mosquito was made with this. 
Phenolic tends to be brittle and wets out the fibers badly, but it has good heat and fire resistance and does not produce toxic fumes in a fire. For this reason, you will often still see it used in aircraft and boat interiors. Polyester is the most used matrix for composite construction today. You will find it in boat hulls and wind turbine blades. It does have poor chemical resistance and burns very easily. Epoxy is the most common matrix chosen for aerospace applications. It is very tough, wets out reinforcements very well, and has a good chemical resistance. It is usually used in combination with carbon fiber for high performance, lightweight applications. These composite materials can be molded into smooth organic shapes. If we are going to use these for aerospace applications, we must make sure we stay within their temperature and stress limits. Composite material construction has been chosen for several suborbital aerospace vehicles. Suborbital vehicles are in a completely different world than orbital vehicles. Let's look at some of these applications. The New Shepard rocket system is a suborbital tourist single stage rocket and capsule configuration that goes straight up and comes back down. It does not turn to fire horizontally and does not even attempt to reach orbital velocity. It barely crosses the official von Karman line of 100 kilometers that denotes being in space. Remember that at 100 kilometers the atmosphere is not absent, but is very thin. Gravity is not gone at this altitude, or even much less than at the surface. Gravity at 100 kilometers is at over 99% the strength it was on the ground. The passengers on the capsule get to experience not low gravity, but free fall. If you had a tall enough building and a fast enough elevator going down, you could have the same experience but no building is tall enough to give you several minutes of free fall like the New Shepard will. And you can clearly see the curvature of the Earth and the blackness of space from the peak altitude of 101.7 kilometers. After reaching the apex of its flight, the capsule then falls through the thin atmosphere and heats up, but not to the point that plasma is produced, as we saw on the Apollo and Dragon missions. The terminal velocity was calculated to be about 278 kilometers per hour after it reaches thicker atmosphere. These speeds through the atmosphere are well within the limits of the composites, with heat buildup being the critical factor. The heat limit of most composite materials is about 200 Celsius. Above this, you will need a heat shield to protect the composites. Another space vehicle flying today is the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 design. This design has a metal frame with composite materials used for the hull. The company that designed the ship was called Scaled Composites and was founded by the Rutan brothers. This ship is also a space tourist suborbital transport vehicle and will be carried to launch altitude by a composite covered large carrier aircraft called White Knight. Once released, a hybrid rocket engine fires carrying the ship above the Karman line. It will free fall for several minutes, then change the configuration of its wings to allow the broad underside of the ship to encounter the atmosphere first, preventing high speed buildup and limiting the heat experienced by the ship. The Lynx was a unique space plane built for tourists that would have taken off from a runway like a regular airplane and come back the same way. Here you see the frame ready for its composite skin. Composite materials are perfect for these applications due to the relatively low velocity in atmospheres that they experience. The faster a ship travels through atmosphere, the more heat resistant it must be. While the X-15 was dropped from a carrier plane like the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, it reached much higher speeds and composite materials would have completely failed from the heat due to these velocities. New metal alloys had to be invented for the X-15 and we will get to these in upcoming lessons on aerospace alloys. So remember, composites are light and can be shaped into nice curves for aerodynamics. They are strong at normal temperatures but cannot survive temperatures above 200 centigrade and become very brittle and weak with cryogenic temperature exposure. The most successful use of composite materials to date is the Electron Rocket by Rocket Lab a U.S. New Zealand company. This is the most innovative space company flying next to SpaceX. Like SpaceX, they have embraced vertical integration, designing their own cryogenic systems that allow them to have composite liquid oxygen tanks. This is a very big deal, as it is extremely hard to get a fabric to contain a gas or liquid, and cryogenic temperatures usually cause composite materials to become too brittle and fail. This company has not only solved this problem, but designs its own cryogenic valves. Rocket Lab also designs the avionics and control computers, keeping it in control of its designs and making it less dependent on outside vendors, which may not be as dedicated to quality control as their company. 
These composite rockets have proven themselves an excellent choice for small payload deployment and composite materials are the perfect choice for the space planes and suborbital capsules we covered. But as Elon Musk discovered when he tried to use composite materials for his innovative Starship design, once you get to larger volumes and colder cryogenic temperatures and must re-enter the atmosphere from orbital or translunar velocities, these materials are a poor choice. Remember that volume increases cubed while surface area is squared. Let us look at where trying to use composite materials in the wrong application led to the shutdown of an excellent spaceship design and the wasting of hundreds of millions of dollars. The X-33 Venture Star was going to be a single stage to orbit spaceship to replace the space shuttle. It was going to use an innovative linear aerospike engine that could have revolutionized rocket propulsion. Everything was going great and the ship was almost completely built when they hit a snag. Composite materials had been chosen for the fuel tanks. The funding for the ship had been predicated on this application. The engineers tried and tried to solve the problem of a large composite tank being strong enough to hold the volume necessary to get this massive ship into orbit. The engineers had to make the composite layers thick to prevent gas leakage and prevent fracturing from the very cold cryogenic fuels, especially the liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen must be kept below 20 Kelvin and this extreme cold will make almost anything brittle enough to fracture. While the materials could have worked with liquid oxygen and supercooled methane or RP1, they could not get it to work for hydrogen. The engineers went to the administrators and told them that they could easily solve the problem with aluminum alloy tanks, but it could not be done with composite tanks. The administrators told the engineers that they had to use composite tanks or the project would be canceled, and it was. This is a very good lesson in why allowing non-scientists and non-engineers to make critical design choices for a spaceship is a very bad idea. The N1 failed because of administrative interference in design choices, and the X-33 was canceled because the administrators, trying to make politicians happy instead of building the best possible ship, failed to make the necessary changes to save the X-33. SpaceX does not work that way. They designed a huge composite tank that worked very well. They had invested millions of dollars in a massive spindle device to overlay the composite fibers to lay the hull. And when they realized there was a better method, they threw it all away. Using what works instead of what someone wanted to use is the secret to innovation. Carbon fiber composites are still used on these massive landing legs you can see deployed by the SpaceX Falcon 9. They can survive the orbital re-entry because they are not on the leading edge directly exposed to the full heat of the re-entry plasma. The carbon composite legs then deploy and can support the full weight of this massive first stage booster. Now that we have a good understanding of aerospace composites, we will move on to other aerospace materials in our next lesson. Thanks for listening. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Contribute if you can. And stay safe.